So, um, yes, so thank you again. And uh, let's see if we have any questions. How to tell benign from malignant soft tissue lesion, the elbow retomite sarcoma from other benign. Okay. So, um, first thing I do is I want to see um, if something is a solid um, enhancing lesion. Okay. So, if you have a, um, a cystic lesion, an MSK, it's, it's not, not usually going to be uh, malignant. Um, so, first thing is to detect if you have a solid lesion. If you have a solid lesion that is enhancing, you kind of need to keep uh, malignant in the differential. There are benign lesions, but um, we have to we have to probably biopsy it if we see a solid lesion. The venous malformation case, if you if you looked at it carefully, it had kind of more kind of lobulated, kind of little finger like projections. Usually, tumors are more ball like lesions; they're smooth, um, and on the post contrast, would not have a solid heterogeneous enhancement. You kind of need to look at all the different projections to um, figure it out. Uh, let's go to the LCH case. So LCH is a very cool entity. Um, it is a fooler for sure. Um, it is a lesion that on x-ray has a punched out lytic lesion look. Um, and that's what we're seeing here. And then when you go to MR, um, it can even have a soft tissue mass. I've seen it with a soft tissue mass. It can look very, very aggressive. But when you put it all together, if you have a lesion with massive edema around it, it should kind of make you think something inflammatory, infectious. LC LCH is kind of an inflammatory lesion. Um, so that punched out lytic look, you and sarcoma doesn't really look like that, right? Um, sure, you can have a metastasis if you have neuroblastoma, but that, that benign periosteal reaction, a smooth reaction, tells you that it's most likely not going to be a malignant lesion. So LCH is something that can present as a solitary bone lesion and um, punched out lytic lesion. And so it's important to suggest that because this is a very sensitive area. Parents uh, want to know that there's a possibility it could be a benign thing. It's very, very stressful for the parents and the families. And so if you can suggest that it could even be LCH, that's actually very helpful um, because if we just say you and sarcoma, they, these guys are extremely depressed and, and it might take weeks to get the biopsy. And so it's very important to kind of always think about LCH. Other questions. You describe the types of discoid in your report. I usually, I don't, I don't, I don't really know the definite different types to be totally honest with you. I do look for the Risberg variant, which I've never seen only in textbooks to see if you have, um, those, those attachments there, the, the uh, meniscal struts, I will kind of describe how big the meniscus is. So if it's going all the way to the notch, I'll make a point of saying that. If it's just kind of a borderline discus, uh, discoid, I'll sort of say that as well. Um, but then I also think it's important to describe if you see any tear, if you see that intrasubstance um, degenerative signal, because that um, will kind of, uh, there's sort of, I think of that as like little micro tears, so they're probably more prone to tearing um, as well. Okay, good. And so um, in pediatrics for bone lesions, I think they're actually more fun than in the adult side because in adults, any lesion could be a metastasis. Uh, but in peds, um, we get more of like the kind of real bone lesions, but I am malignant. So you can really use your, I have a whole other talk on, uh, on, on pediatric uh, bone lesions, but um, you can really use your location and imaging findings to actually predict more of the Histology. Uh, okay, so talo fracture versus um, versus uh, triplane. So talo fracture is again the best way to think of it is that it's an avulsion fracture. So an avulsion fracture of the syndesmotic ligament. So you have the um, syndesmotic ligament is going to be pulling off the um, anterolateral corner of the tibial epiphysis, and so. Um, what we're seeing here is that this piece of epiphysis avulses off and that produces a salt Harris three fracture. So that's all it is. A triplane is not an avulsion fracture. So it's, it's a different fracture altogether. You have basically a fracture in three different planes. You have a vertical fracture through the epiphysis going through the physis and on the lateral view, the metaphyseal fracture. So it's three different parts to it, salt Harris four. Okay, going back to the leukemia case, um, when you first look at 
the marrow. Um, symmetry is, um, let me go back here. Uh, symmetry is not gonna help you as much in these cases, very tricky. Um, you want to get used to what normal marrow looks like. So on a stir image, if you just pull up a stir image from a case that you have currently in your, in your, in your systems, stir images, the marrow should be kind of grayish. Um, you would never have a uh, marrow that is like this, this bright. Um, if you, if you compare that to cases you have, this should be uh, alarming. When you go to the T1, um, notice that the marrow is darker than adjacent to skeletal muscle. That is concerning for a malignant process. And then in PEDs, the other hint you can do is look for areas that you expect to see fatty marrow. So even if you're someone with just hyperactive red marrow or a lot of red marrow, the epiphyses and the diaphyses usually are still fatty. And so this is a red flag that you see um, dark epiphyses. So if you see dark epiphyses on T1, that should kind of make you think that this is, this is concerning for our marrow replacement process. And I'm working on a technique um, with uh, fat fraction to basically um, be able to put a region of interest to actually give you a percentage. So I have a paper in uh, Peds Rad from a few years ago showing that if you do a fat fraction similar to liver, uh, you can actually get a number and typically leukemic cases are below 10%. And so um, if you have a ton of marrow infiltration, the fat and the marrow will go down, 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 down. And that's a way to kind of make it a little bit less subjective. Any other questions here? We're just about over the hour. Thank you so much for your compliments. Appreciate it. Uh, happy to give more talks in the future if you guys would like. Um, these are um, hard cases. Pediatrics is definitely challenging, uh, but it's fun. And uh, that's what I love. So thank you guys for enjoying it.